Hello, classmates, and welcome to another episode of Middle Class Film Class Movie Review Edition. I'm your host for today, Pete. And I'm Tyler. And I'm Joseph. And today, on stream, we're going to be reviewing my movie from the Wheel of Destiny, The FP. Buckle up. For years, an underground war has raged for dominance over the small town of Fraser Park between two clans. The 248 from the north. We roll together. We die together. And the 245 <laughs> from the south. Yo, clam shout up! It's the end of days out there, J Troll. The <laughs> darkness has come. J Troll. Back your thing up off my flavor. Listen up, y'all. We're gonna break history tonight. The battle for the FP has only just begun. <laughs> Three, two, one. <laughs> oh, it's glorious. Check out your hero now. He sure got one eight seven. <laughs> Joe's death wasn't your fault. It's his. He wasn't expecting the unexpected. You just disappeared. <laughs> you didn't tell no one where you went. You ain't the only one who lost Petro. Oh, dear. Got a surprise for you. Me and brother Petro. You gonna try him on? After Petro got 187, the 2 for 8 lost it. The 2 for 5 has taken over. <laughs> Held up, he's got even more street cred now. Hey, LWE, I challenge you to a beat up. <laughs> Say what? Saturday night, a wild oh, Barbie stole that joke. Beat beat revelation match. I'm in. Yo. 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 That's flirting in the future. Let's see what the kids got. That's flirting outside of Bakersfield. I, I was so surprised to see him in this movie. <laughs> Who? Clifton Collins Jr.? Oh, yeah. You're gonna take W.E. down. Dance with your mind. I don't remember hearing this song in the in the movie. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't know. I didn't. I don't. I don't. I didn't catch that part. But uh, so no. there's some catchy ass songs in it. So the FP. Here we are. We're doing it. And uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, internet uh, society at large, please don't cancel us. Um, yes. <laughs> they had to do a lot of editing around that trailer. Yeah, they <laughs> sure did. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, they did. Okay, so the FP directing and are uh, directed by Brandon Trost and Jason Trost, brothers in the industry. Also written by Brandon and Jason Trost, starring, you guessed it, J Jason Trost as J Tro. The Trost brothers. Yeah, a version of himself called J Tro. Um, and this is also stor uh, starring Lee Valmassey, Valmassey as LWE. Mm -hmm. Art Shu as KCDC, Caitlin Foley as Stacy, Nick Prince, uh, Principe as BLT, James DeBello as Beatbox Busta Bill. <laughs> I can't even say this person's name, their, their, their name without being canceled on Twitch. Um, Beatbox Busta <laughs> No, Bill. the next one. Oh, okay. Brian Goddard as Sugar something else. <laughs> oh, I, I, I was going to cast it, but I won't. Yeah, please, the... <laughs> please don't. <laughs> Uh, Brendan Bar Barrera playing Beatro. So Brandon Tross not playing himself in this, his alter ego. Mm -hmm. But there's also a, 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 a litany of other big name people that you would be very surprised to see in this ultra, ultra, ultra low budget movie. Yeah. Basically a no budget movie. Uh, Clif Clifton Collins Jr. playing CC Jam. Uh, Blaine Weaver as the gas station attendant. James Remar as the narrator. Uh, and Sean Whalen as Stacy's dad. Stacy's dad. <laughs> Is really kind of sad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's his character comes out of nowhere. So, um, I think when the reveal of him is, yeah, it was like, oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Joseph, do you have a way to put the MP3 to play the MP3? That's one thing I don't think we did. The what? The MP3 file for the um, call. You have it on the board. Oh yeah, duh. <laughs> Please forgive us, listeners. It was we're still in the infancy of the, the uh, Twitch days. So, uh, uh, that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. So, anyways, watch the shit show live. Yeah, go to uh. twitch.tv slash MCFC podcast if you want to watch us live. We're doing it every Saturday from here on out. I got to say that you podcast listeners are missing out. Yes, yes. I'm not in costume anymore. Tyler technically is, but he technically never really was. 
<laughs> He's just wearing a, a yeah. Batman onesie. You can't tell that I am. Yeah. I, I mean, like, I, I, you know, this is my uh, weekend attire. Exactly. Mm. So. So the FP, uh, this is an insane movie that I thought would be very fun to break down with you guys. And I'm really curious to see what your thoughts were on it. Um, but before my thoughts and our thoughts, I wanted to get the the thoughts of a certified FP fanboy, mm-hmm. a super fan, if you will, mm-hmm. uh, named Ryan Darty. He's a friend of mine, an internet friend of mine from um, we frequent the Popcorn and Puzzle Pieces Facebook group, mm-hmm. and that's uh, from Piecing It Together, David Rosen's podcast. And uh, I found the movie through that, through that group, and through Ryan. Mm-hmm. And I heard mm-hmm. him talking about it so glowingly, and I'm like, if anybody can be this obsessed with this movie, it's got to be interesting. And I yeah. watched it, and it is interesting. So um, I had a call previous to this with Ryan. I'm going to play it now. It's a little long, but he gives us some really interesting insight on the FP. So here we go. That's Ryan right there. Yeah. Is it working? Hold on, technical difficulties. Go to Audacity. We're going to Audacity. Yeah, we're going to Audacity. <laughs> Go to Audacity. Audacity. And then, uh, ooh, I don't know if we're going to be able to open a new one with that. Will you? What, this is going? While it's going. Uh, I don't know either. Just go ahead and stop it, and we'll just start a new one. Stop it? Yeah, stop it. We're okay. stopping. Then go open, open recent, and call with Ryan. There we go. Okay. Why is it, it, why is it not showing up on here, though? I don't know. Um, can you export it one more time? See what I mean by a shit show? Twi- yeah, twi- <laughs> Twitch people are going to have to bear with us for a second. This is going to get edited out for the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, just this? Yeah, just, just export it. Yeah, MP3. try it one more time. Call with Ryan. Two. Two. Yeah. <laughs> V2. Uh, whatever. Okay. Yeah, wherever you want it, and then we'll just put it on the, on the OB, on the roadcaster. Insane. Um, let's make sure. Okay. Okay, so it's, yeah, okay. It's there. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but, uh, it was there. Um... Hello. There you go. It's box. There we go. <sighs> Sit tight, Twitch land. This will yeah. only take about 30 seconds. Replace. I use probably because it crashed halfway through. Remember it, the the app bro- mm-hmm. broke down on us? Okay. I'm going to exit transfer mode. Cool. That's good. Okay. Okay. Back to it. Go back to Audacity and you have to roll one more time. Oh, yeah. Where are we? Audacity. New? Yeah, new. We'll figure it out later. Okay. Fix the rest later. Okay, cool. We're rolling. Okay, so we're going to play the call that I had with Ryan Darty uh, previously right now. Okay, so joining us on the show, we have Ryan Darty, who is um, an online friend who we haven't really spoken a lot of, you know, one, one-on-one, but we share a couple of Facebook movie groups, uh, the Piecing It Together uh, the Piecing It Together podcast group, uh, which is called Popcorn and Puzzle Pieces. You've heard me talk about it on the show before. <laughs> and Ryan is Ryan's here with us on the phone. Hi, Ryan. Hey, yeah, I, this was kind of my calling. I think you like posted on the Popcorn and Puzzle Pieces like, hey, there's someone in here who's really obsessed with the FP, right? And then like multiple people tagged me. <laughs> as like, yeah, that's Ryan's yeah. thing. And I've, your... I've gotten some other people in the group into the movie as well. It's your time to shine. <laughs> It, it, it's it's nice to know all that obsession has led to a, a, a ten minute feature yes. on a podcast. Yes. You know that's well that's it. what life's about. I believe that you're the one that actually got me into it because right around December of last year, 2022, I was stricken by COVID and I was in my quarantine and I had I heard about this movie, the FP, on the Popcorn and Puzzle Pieces page, and I was like, this seems like an insane concept (laughs) and you seem so pumped about it that i was like i got to give it a watch and it definitely stuck with me obviously enough to where we're we're being on the show now so how when did when did you get into the how did you get into it and what's your relationship with the fp so i am kind of weird in that i most people who have discovered the movie heard the premise somewhere else like they heard like oh there's that deadly dance gangster movie and then they look it up (laughs) in my case i was looking up (laughs) another movie and accidentally found all superheroes must die which is another movie by jason yeah 
okay, that was an interesting movie. You know, it was made, made for $5 mm-hmm. and reusing a lot of props, but we thought it was interesting. And then we saw this movie called The FP, and we're like, okay, we got to check it out. So I think we double featured it. And my friend and I basically didn't say a word the entire movie. We were just <laughs> staring, trying to process this. And for a long time, um, my love of it was solely ironic. It was, it was you know, <laughs> I, and I, I've mentioned this before that I've come around, but a big part of it was I didn't think they were in on the joke. Yeah. I thought it was a totally earnest attempt that just happened <laughs> to be very cheesy. Mm-hmm. Um so a lot, a lot of my initial appreciation of the movie was very ironic and very mocking and kind of mean spirited. Um mm. Because there are some things in that movie that honestly are just bad because they had thirty dollars to make it, you yeah, know, it was like made on or no did... budget, yeah, thirty dollars. <laughs> yeah, so w- when you have a movie like that, it's sometimes hard to tell what is satire and what is just like genuinely dropping the ball a little. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you know, I started reading interviews and looking into the production history of the movie more and realizing that like there are so many things that I thought were like. I was laughing at because I thought they were snafus or they were failures. And then it was like, Oh no, they deliberately did that to be funny. Mm-hmm. They just played it so straight laced that mm-hmm. I genuinely thought that it was um, what the film is supposed to be or whatever. Sure. And uh, I, I we, we've discussed this. I believe you've only seen the first one, Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there are There's four two? of them now. And There's four. <laughs> they definitely turn into the skid quite a bit more okay, brandon okay. is not involved in the later three i believe in any capacity oh you said they're a hollywood family brandon trost is a cinematographer he's worked on a ton of big name stuff and then his yeah. their sister is a costume designer right yeah and actually the, uh, sarah's contributions to the fp franchise is i think really what kind of won me over because at first it just looks like a mess and a lot of it is mm-hmm. um but there is a ton of thought put behind it as well. Um, the theming of the costumes and there are, you know, definitely constraints by the fact that it was like, well, what can we find in thrift stores? What can we find in yeah. Sarah's closet? But even though it's very like disparate and scattered, there Sarah's is closet. a cohesive theme within the things. And that becomes it's a, a no, lot more no obvious, budget movie. particularly in beats of rage FP two, which is my favorite one by far. Okay. Um, the costume design is just absolutely inspired. And uh, their dad, Ron, uh, is a special effects guy, and he he's been around for quite a while. So a lot of the older Jatro movies are all of like old props that he used to work with, or things that are left over that he experimented with. And a lot of the like set design you see in those movies is just like, well, Dad had this in the garage, and it looks pretty cool. And that's why I love, for example, um, Ron definitely worked on Mortal Kombat Annihilation. I forget if he worked on. <laughs> the OG Mortal Kombat, the dead. but uh, Beats of Rage is the same way FP1 is kind of a riff on Rocky for the most part. Beats mm-hmm. of Rage is mostly a riff on oh Mortal Kombat, and it has actual props from Mortal Kombat that's in great. it, and I just think that's awesome. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah, I, I can't wait to watch the second one because I've heard it's very good. Beats of Rage is a, is a super fun uh, subtitle. I, I think you might even be able to get it in like the special editions, but there's like a Lord <laughs> of the Rings style map of California. And and it is geographically like the relations between the things 100% mirrors real life. Because I, I assume you're aware of this. It was filmed in Fraser Park. That's why it's called the yes. FP. That's, yes. um, and that's funny because like I, I have since met people from Fraser Park and I, I always ask them about the movie and a couple <laughs> times it's been people who like went to high school with those guys and they're so like yeah I remember just like kids from our school would like on Fridays we'd like get drunk and go to this movie set to like help out a friend of a friend of a friend as an extra <laughs> and stuff but something interesting recently is a winning Powerball lottery ticket was sold yes, uh, in Fraser Park and I believe the liquor store that was supposed to be the scene of the final fight before they had to move it to a um a gas station for yeah. clearance issues. Oh, that um, one. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, the shootout. Yeah. Um I believe that liquor store 
is the one that the, the winning ticket was sold from. I could be wrong <laughs> about that, but um, like on all the Facebook groups, the minute that winning lottery ticket was sold, like every single person posted the story. I have to, I have to ask you. You mentioned the FP Fest. Can you tell the, our listeners a little bit about that? There's definitely a groundswell of folks who are not just into the FP, but are into pretty much anything Jason makes, and it's kind of turned into this community of people who are like wildly wholesome and supportive of each other it's it's bizarre because the, the fp films are kind of a little bit acidic and they're a little yeah. uh edgy and stuff but it's just so wholesome and i i think this started from essentially uh, jason tends to kickstar or indiegogo pretty much all of his productions and mm. um one of the for the for the kickstarter for uh fp2 one of it was like Hey, we've got a party scene we need to film, which means we need extras anyway. So, you know, get this tier and come out and be in the FP and, you know, you bring whatever costume props you want, you know, and we'll throw some other shit on you and, and turn it into oh. a costume <laughs> uh, and you'll be a character. And um, that I did not attend that, but that was like a weekend where everyone like camped out on Ron's property. <laughs> they did filming. They would go out and party at night. And I think that was the origin of the idea of getting FP fans together. And I believe the first official, what was called FP Fest was in uh, 2020 and it was during COVID. So it was essentially just a bunch of people who, you know, I, I think he was raising money for finishing FP3 at the time. You know, make your own character, recreate a character, make like art based on it. And it's insane the level that some of these people go. There are costumes, uh, like Sarah judges the costume contest every year. Oh, and cool. like literally, she'll like talk about things like, oh, I actually almost tried to do this for a character once. Or, oh, how did I not think of like, let's incorporate this? Yeah, and, yeah. um, and it's everyone's just like kind of in a chat room hyping each other up about everything and developing these running jokes. And they've done it a couple of years um, in a row. And when he releases other projects, he did a project called Corona House a couple of years ago. Uh -huh. uh, and same kind of thing. They would have like a virtual watch party every week when the new episodes came out and everyone would just talk to each other. And these are still folks who like I will you know hit them up to talk about things it, it's a genuine community i i mentioned this to you i would almost c compare it to like how oh. all right that's uh that's enough, <laughs> that's enough. I, well we got a technical difficulty on this oh well oh, okay um yeah he could go on and on <laughs> yeah about right that. I, the reason why i really wanted to talk to ryan was because the I think like he seems very passionate he, about this so, so exactly. That's the point. The the passion that comes behind these like the super fans of the fan base is really impressive. And um he likened it to almost to how it's like a cult. <laughs> and and J J Trost or J Tro is uh oh, is that why J Tro Jason Trost, J Tro and yeah. Brandon Trost. B Tro. Yeah. Oh now I get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and he says that he essentially has this like cult leader sort of way to f essentially get people to work on his first future projects in a lovingly way you know it's it's kind sure. of poking fun mm -hmm. at it yeah um a couple of things that he mentioned um that got cut off here on, on this uh this recording was uh, how much more was there um God, there's you know, a long interview. Yeah, we we talked for like 30 minutes and I cut it down to about 15. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my! That cut out about the halfway point. Part so of this move. sorry, Ryan. Um, but yeah, he he's mentioned a couple things. He said uh, that uh, J Jason did break his leg during the production, and that's why they used the giant boots. He broke his leg. Yeah, he broke his, his leg. Broke his peg. So the um, his what? This giant. <laughs> his, that his giant boots that he's wearing are a kind of so that it could cover his cast oh that's what and all yeah. the dance oh, scenes he was filming okay. with a broken leg which is pretty impressive wow um and then uh, he said that the he broke it outside of production i don't know it didn't, was it was it wasn't clear about okay. that okay but the um <laughs> you know the woman who's there in the party scene and she's just a background character and her like top falls off and her boobs are yeah, out and the guy's just like fondling her yeah well there's there's one where she's just chilling just kind of dancing along and her like tits hanging out and she puts it back up and it falls off again. They hired a, like a local porn star to be in the movie. Local? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly local. Local of Fraser Park. Okay. 
and uh, he, he kind of went on and on. And we we talked specifically about um, how the FP universe fandom is very similar to the Juggalo fandom mm-hmm. in the sense that it's like the the content is not wholesome, but the fan pace is oddly wholesome. Like you're part of a family when you're when you're a Juggalo. <laughs> When you're here, you're family. Yeah, exactly. I, it's been said many times. Uh, my, 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 my mind is spinning right now with this whole idea of like this like cult following. Of cult of FP. Yes. Horrible move. The FP universe. So, uh, okay. So that's that. Ryan, thank you so much for your time. Um, I will put the full clip uh, posted uh, somewhere in the uh, maybe in the Patreon or put it put it in the uh, the, yeah, the put show it on notes. The Patreon. Let let the people who are paying good money to. Yeah, hear. we got we got we were gonna do like a live call and it just didn't work out with our timing and I recorded it right before this episode and had to cut it down and yeah a lot of scrambling with the Twitch stuff so we didn't get everything. <laughs> this is all new new stuff. For yeah, us. so yeah, yeah, yeah. We're figuring it out. But the movie itself, uh, we're gonna get into the re- review right now. Okay. You two haven't seen it before. I have. So, Tyler, why don't you give us your initial thoughts on the FP? Uh, and watch your watch your tongue. <laughs> yes, don't, I will. Watch. Do not repeat any of the lines <laughs> said by L Dub or whatever. L Dub yes. E. I, I, I will. Uh, I will refrain. Hold, I will refrain. Push that little man down inside of you. Thank you. Yes, I will. <laughs> I will. Thank you, Joseph. And for, sit up a little reminding. Bit. I, 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 sit up. Sit up I, a little bit. Yeah, we're on camera now. All right, fine. I'll sit up a Just little bit. Just a little bit. bit. <laughs> okay, there you sh- go. Fine. Show the audience your All onesie. Right. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, uh, so the FP, uh, I knew what I was going to like watch when I watched this movie. Like I knew it was going to be like some Dance Dance Revolution, mm-hmm. gang rivalry mm-hmm. sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, however... I mean, I, I, I Pete didn't, prompted I, us a little bit. He yeah. did, he did, he did he did yes that is correct. Um, but I thought it, I thought it was gonna be a little bit more nuanced. Um, <laughs> but it actually, from what I took from the movie was they were trying. I mean, obviously the main character is trying to be Snake Plissken. Like I mean, let's not kid ourselves. He, like he actually has an eye uh, issue. Well, he, he I, wears a uh, eye patch in real life. I know. Too. I looked on IMDb, and he does. He does have the eye patch. Tyler, get your mic up. He does have the <laughs> eye patch, but uh, yes, uh, he, he would like you know he had like the mullet, like he had like the like skin tight like clothes. Wasn't really a mullet, was mm-hmm. it? No, not really. He has long hair. Yeah, it kind of looked like a mullet. Okay, he, continue. He, continue. He, was try, he was trying. He was trying to be Snake Plissken. Sure. Okay. And and uh, I think they acted like I think I knew what they were trying to do. Like they were trying to make like the cheesy '80s action movie uh-huh. with like a spin on a video game. I don't think it worked. I I. I wanted it to work, mm-hmm. but it just, I don't know. Like, it just. Was it not fun or entertaining to you? There were some funny moments, but I think I was making fun at the movie rather than having fun with the movie, so if you, that makes sense. You're like at the first time Ryan saw it, too, where he was thinking of it in jest until he saw it again and then had a more of an appreciation for I, it. I th- I th- and I think. Uh, yeah, so like first initial reactions, yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't really like it, didn't like, like it, at yeah. all, like, and it, it's a, it's a, uh, hun- it, not a hundred, not uh, hundred, it's an hour and twenty minutes. It felt like almost two hours. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like it felt almost like two hours. So okay. like, yeah, no, I uh, initial reactions, yeah, no, I didn't like it. I, I think, I think it tried too hard. Okay, okay, Joseph, uh, what were your thoughts on the FP on your first watch? Um, well, I didn't mean to do that. Um, uh, but, um, my initial thoughts on the FP were kind of like, I felt the way that Tyler felt at one point in the movie mm-hmm. where I thought this was bad, mm-hmm. but for some context, I kind of watched this movie twice or this movie was on twice in my house. <laughs> the first time I watched twice. it, what? the first time I watched it. Um, it was late at night, and I watched the first twenty 
minutes of it and then i fell asleep and then i woke up it was over <laughs> and so i was like well it's not, happen- were, it's not were happening tonight inebriated a little right maybe just a little okay. affected <laughs> um and then i woke up saturday morning to this morning and uh i rewatched the, the whole thing. thing okay yeah oh you did it the tyler way yes uh, <laughs> well, I, I woke up he at, pulled the noe <laughs> i yeah. woke up at 9 30 not six yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Playing fast and loose with your time there, Noe. <laughs> um, and uh, watching it again, I feel like I kind of got like like a like w- watching it the first time. Like Ryan said, like oh, this is movie used to being all serious, and like it's yeah. it just ended up being not a great movie. Mm-hmm. But on the second time, I kind of got like a hybrid viewing of that second watch, where I was like, oh, I I knew what they were doing the first time, but it just wasn't working for me. But on the second time half time i guess yeah it was it, it landed a little bit better okay the the slurs and stuff it was kind of jarring at first yes and yes, but but at the same time i was like i mean i can't speak for a whole community <laughs> <laughs> okay but it's almost like but here we go but it's <laughs> but it's almost like it's like I, i'm not gonna say anything um <laughs> Overall, oh, don't worry, I'll say it for you. Overall, it was it was enjoyable and it was funny because of how over the top mm-hmm. the characters were. Specifically, L W E. Yeah. <laughs> but specifically, his character. Yes. He he was just so ridiculous. Where <laughs> I, it's almost because it's it's like because um the main character Jatro he is such a straight straight man yeah. compared to everybody else who is his friend uh the mc guy yeah um and uh his like trainer and uh, lwe and his little goons that he has mm. the, everybody else is so like amped, like normal characters amped up yeah he's like the only normal and character. he though. is the most straight like character like yeah. he is just plays plays it like tame mm-hmm. compared to everybody else um it's just the actions that he's doing are funny like the training montages kiss is like <laughs> it's 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 or pretty t- funny because he, he's taking he, dance revolution he's taking it so seriously but what he's doing is what he's doing it for sure. what he's training for mm. that's the comedy and uh and i didn't know uh i mean at the fp i knew it stood for fraser park mm-hmm. uh, and, and i don't know if you mentioned it before and if you did i totally forgot yeah but i was like watching like these the skyline shots of like the city i was like that looks like that looks like a town you drive by when you're going in the grapevine right yeah, exactly and and, exactly. I was like, <laughs> and i was like this looks like bakersfield the movie yes <laughs> and then i looked it up on google maps and it's just no like, way. it's just right down it's, it's just it's south, south, of, it's bakersfield. Right there. south it's just of bakersfield right, south of bakersfield southwest right and I was like, "Oh shit! I almost got it." Um, yeah, the f- the third one is called the FP three Escape from Baco. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No way. No. Yes. Um, oh my god. And it was cool because I got notes of other movies. Um, this was it was like a little bit of idiocracy, mm-hmm. um, for sure. Yes. In, in the yes. in the comedy and in the characters, um, and also it was like this is like a white version of Pootie Tang. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I didn't I never thought of that, but I see it. And uh this one is obviously a lot more abs- uh absurd, I think. I mean, they're both absurd. I was going to say they're both very absurd in their own more, way. More um obscene. Okay, yeah, yeah. A more vulgar it's version of Pootie e- Tang. Evil Pootie Tang. Yeah. White <laughs> white white people Pootie Tang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. But yeah, it's that that was like the two like big like comparisons I I was thinking of. Idiocracy came up first. Um, because of the characters and yeah. like the future, sort of. Yeah, yeah. So, did you like it? Like uh, after after watching it, like. Uh, well, yeah, I, I mean, I kind of said that already, but yeah, I, I enjoyed it for what it for what it was, oh. and um, it's uh, it's 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 like a it's a stupid movie. Yeah. <laughs> yes, 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 it is. It's Absolutely. A, like yes, it, it, it is. it's a stupid movie. Like Idiocracy is a stupid movie. Yeah, and. I think they're both in of the same genre. This is just of a less, uh, has a lot less production quality mm-hmm. than. I mean, it's Mike Judge versus yeah. people who with I a, mean, a zero budget movie. Yeah. They basically shot with all their family members. Uh, I know supplies, and, and it's funny because <laughs> it didn't really bother the low budget. Didn't really bother me that much um, because they did a lot 
with what yeah. they had. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And they're the. I mean, they work in the industry and they have a whole family, so like they know mm-hmm. they know people and have connections. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are some shots that where I was like, this was shot on like a T two I or something. <laughs> like I don't know what that is. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's like, like a DSLR camera. Oh, okay. Like an older one. What's that? Um, <laughs> and um, and the music too. The music was kind of like a giveaway, like the composed music. Yeah. The little like they made it in Garage Band or something. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Um, but it was it, it it didn't distract me at all really. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I I would agree with you with that. It was um there was a gritty nature to it, and it was like they made something. They made a whole series, so it's uh they did something right. Yeah. Um, That's pretty- cool. Well, yeah. I'm I'm glad I'm glad you uh kind of got the hybrid first and second watch. Yeah, it was uh it's. Because I, I don't know if I would have. It's a short movie. Yeah, it is a very short movie. Um, Didn't feel like it. <laughs> is uh, so it's like it's it wouldn't be too hard to like go back and rewatch it again. Mm-hmm. But I don't. Yeah, I don't know if I if I watch it full the first time in that current like tired state. Yeah, and then like been like, what the hell is this? You didn't pay money to watch. No, it, this is you? streaming on Tubi. It's, it's on Tubi. Oh, I I watched it on Freebie. Oh, oh it's on Freebie too. Yeah, yeah. another yeah. free okay. service. Um. But yeah, I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Cool, awesome. Okay, so my thoughts. Your thoughts. My thoughts on the FP, the Fraser Park, the FP. FP. Um, I regaled us already. I, I I have to comment that um, Ryan did say that later in the series, after the first one, they drop all of the uh, casual racial slurs. It's gone. I wonder. I. Oh, well, that's good. I wonder <laughs> I, if he if we were to. Because it was very alarming. If we were to get him on the show, I, I would I'd be. Uh, open to asking him like what was the what was the reason <laughs> i i can almost uh, without even asking i can probably almost definitively say that the subculture that they're mimicking Would is do that. basically yeah white guys that are acting like thugs. people in bakersfield <laughs> yeah basically the thugs in bakersfield and thugs, yeah. thugs in in um uh yeah. the tehachapis that are like i'm a thug i'm a i'm a i'm a street thug and I, that vernacular is thrown around very casually, and it's like it's in this movie. And I'm gonna just I'll, I'll just comment on that right now. Mm-hmm. I think in this movie, mm-hmm. it's not it's not said in a in a, a way that feels it's not derogatory. No, or no it doesn't. Like it doesn't that. feel like it's trying to take anybody down. It's almost just like it's it, like saying homie. Yeah, exactly. It's like uh, he's my friend. Yeah, what's up, player? Yeah, step to me, player. You know, except yeah, my for, friends in Paris. It's yeah, <laughs> except for that's not the word. <laughs> And the bastardization of the word is funny in itself, you know. Yeah, they they turn into an acronym. Yeah, they use even use it as an acronym, and there's a short and an even shorter <laughs> version of it, you know? I know. And so, anyways, I watched the movie for the first time. Ryan, hack the happenstance is the one that got me into it, and I watched mm-hmm. it, and I'm like, I don't even know how to rate this movie. I don't know if this is a a, a good movie or a, the worst movie, and but I it's you're with, flabbergasted. It, you're like, I was. What, what, I was like, what did I just? Watch? I'm sitting right here on this couch where I quarantined, <laughs> covered in COVID, co- dripping, soaking wet with sweat. <laughs> with the 19, I had yeah, I had a, 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 a COVID 19. What do they call those things on the the little stems that come off of the germ? If they have a name for them, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, don't I, don't know. know. I, don't I had those remember. growing on me. They were all uh-huh. over the place. It was a weird strain. And I was like, much like Joseph, I was 10 minutes in. And first off, the first 10 minutes, great. That little, and I think that's mainly what the short was. It was like the mm-hmm. intro dance sequence and then his brother dies. And you're like, how did he die? I he, thought, he just fell down. He, he just collapsed. <laughs> he just fell down and died because he, he lost? He danced too hard. He danced too hard. He now danced himself. So I watched that and I'm like... <laughs> And then it cuts to this I really. I laughed at that scene yeah, so much. It cuts to this really well produced <laughs> intro scene that's like Commando or something, mm-hmm. yes. where he's like, yes. he's working at a, like a mill, and his friend comes he's back. He's a lumberjack. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, this is like a throwback, an homage to these like shitty '80s and '90s action movies. It reminded me of uh, I don't know if you've seen uh, Red Sonia, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, mm-hmm. where he's literally a lo- a logger. Oh mm-hmm. my god. <laughs> Well, yeah. in, in uh, Commando, he's, a deep he's, isn't he holding a log at the beginning? He's like walking with a log. Yeah, I think uh, so. Uh, might be. I'm I, pretty sure. I, I think so, yeah. So anyways, I, I watched Sorry, it. not Red Sonia. Uh, Raw Deal. Raw Deal, yeah. okay. I haven't seen either one. Jesus Christ, so, that's a deep cut. So I watched hmm. I watched the first like 10 minutes and I'm like, this is, this is really, uh, I think, a vision. They have a vision and they're executing <laughs> on it. And then the movie <laughs> continues and I'm like, yeah, I don't know about this. <laughs> I don't know about the language. I don't know about the... 
you know, these caricatures of caricatures. It's like an, an amplified caricature. Yeah. But then, then the scene comes when he's like, uh, I know these J-Tro, five letter J- words that are being thrown out. It's just like, Oh my God. They're like, what the hell? <laughs> Can I finish Tyler? Go ahead. So he's like his buddy, his buddy's like, Jatro, they took all the alcohol out of the FP out of the two, four, eight or whatever. Yeah. And he's oh, like, yeah. With no alcohols, there's no bums with no bums. There's no one to feed the ducks. <laughs> what kind of town got no ducks, J Tro? That ain't no town. And I just lost it. I'm like, this is fucking great. Yeah, this yeah, is because so great. They, but well, because they're 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 on uh, meth now. Like uh, for some reason, they needed the booze supply. Yeah, yeah they, well, they, they say that too. Like there's like people going straight edge on the street. Yeah, <laughs> they're doing meth and shit. Apparently, in one of the later uh, uh, sequels, uh, people they give a curse when they're uh, not drunk. Mm. They are affected by some <laughs> curse. So, but anyways, yeah, it's. Uh, I liked it the first time. The second time, I liked it a lot more. I enjoyed you it did. much, much more. Yes, because I knew what I was in on, and I, I kind of knew what the joke was. And there's a, a famous like theory that um, I've heard put out from John Cleese from Monty Python. Mm-hmm. I know he's from a million things, but when he was in Monty Python, or speaking about it. So I remember uh, he was in an interview in, in, in an interview and somebody asked him, you know, what, what do you what makes your guys comedy so funny? You know, why are you guys considered classics? And he said, um, good comedy should take something very serious and do it as silly as possible or take something very silly and do it as serious as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the second version. I, yeah, I, 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 uh, I would agree or I would say that uh, the taking something serious or taking something silly and making it serious is the funnier version of those two mm-hmm. versions of comedy. Yeah, uh, I, I, I agree. You know so, what? Now, so, the, so the other example that, that I kind of always lean on when I talk about this, this quote in Monty Python, there's a sketch called the problem with mouse with mice or problem with the mouses or something like that. The mouse problem. Hmm. Um, and it's, it's an interview, like a Charlie Rose style interview on stage. And it's just an interviewer. <laughs> um, and he's talking Charlie to Rose. a guy and he's like, um, you know, when was it the first time that you thought you were a mouse? <laughs> and it's John Cleese. No. Yeah. It's John Cleese on stage. And he's like, well, you know, I went over to my friend's house and everyone was drinking a little bit. And then someone brought out some cheese. <laughs> and he's like what happened next and he goes well I started nibbling <laughs> nibbling on the cheese and it's supposed to be an allegory for like coming out as gay because in the 70s and you know 60s it was it was known that there was you know gay people or whatever but it wasn't talked yeah, about it was, wasn't it, talked about in public wasn't it was, broadcasted it was very the, very problematic correct for, it yeah. was just a, a new thing and it was almost it was a stigma and, and being gay in public a stigma and, yes yeah yes, uh, yes, being yes, gay yes. in public was a thing so they took this concept and they instead of making it like i'm coming out i first time i realized i was gay they said it's the first time i realized i was a mouse mm-hmm. yeah and then he and he great, says great and stuff. they go down that road and it's such a fantastic it's my one of my favorites of all the time with with um mm-hmm. monty python so second yeah. so second upon viewing of uh the fb you yes. enjoyed it more well yeah and, and I, I realized what they were doing they were taking this stupid concept of you know, in the future, what's something stupid that we can do where people are going to settle their hash? Dance, dance, revolution. Okay, we can't get all that. Beat, 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 beat revelation. Great. And we're going to make it as silly as possible because that's the name of the game. We're taking this thing. We're going to make it super silly. Mm-hmm. The but game. The, all the characters are going to be silly, but they're going to take it so seriously. To them, the world is serious. Yes, yes. Uh, so, and what's more serious than losing your brother in the in the fight at the beginning? You know, <laughs> I know that was so. Ridiculous. So, so that's so. Let me, let me finish. So the 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 second time was a delight. I cannot wait to see the second one. And I've heard the third and fourth are not nearly as good, but the second one's supposed to be the. the I gotta the gem. watch this movie again. Yeah, because so. because after hearing you guys spin the yarns of this movie and why you guys like it, like now, like. Like the wheels are turning sure. in my in my head, and I'm just like, oh my god! You, like, but, it, but it, here's the thing: it, I, I, the, I, the point went way over my head. Well, I, I, here's the other thing too: I understand why people w- wouldn't like this. Mm-hmm. There, uh, for one, the the crassness of the humor, because like at the end of the movie, 
the guy gets the the hero gets the girl at the end of the movie, and instead of kissing in the sunset, she blows him. I know. In, the, in know. against the sunset, and he puts his hands over his head and everything. Yes, he puts his hands over and his the, head. The and camera like... pulls back, and he's just on the on the side of the river, getting a head, getting a head. And it's like it's so crass. It is so. Oh but my god! It, it's almost like it's gone so far past the point of crassness that it's returned to funny again. Yeah, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. like when a joke goes on for so long, it gets old. If it keeps going, then it gets funny again. Mm -hmm. And that's like this whole movie entangled into one thing. Yeah, you know what? Like after hearing you guys discuss about it, because like when I after the first, and I'm done with my thoughts. Oh, well, Joseph. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> well, I, so. When, after I watched the movie, I was comparing it to Escape from New York because, like, that it kind of has that sort of feel, like, you know, with the guy with the eye patch and the mm -hmm. mullet and, like, mm -hmm. you know, everything else. Like, uh, well, I think he's so, an amalgamation of Snake Plissken, Arnold from Commando, Rocky, a little bit. Yeah, Rocky from, yes, yeah. I mean, he's it's kind of a, I mean, I, I know that the easy comparison is, um, you know, just it's Rocky, straight ahead Rocky, but I think that it's a, an amalgamation of a lot of people. It just, um, so like I had that comparison because those movies, um, like I'm just gonna use Escape from New York as an example. Escape from New York takes itself seriously, but recognizes like the like cheesiness mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. it, uh, of, of, of everything, uh, but. Because Kurt Russell is such a a charismatic actor, and because John Carpenter is an amazing writer slash director, mm -hmm. um, it's easy to appreciate like that movie as being like pure inter entertainment sure. um, for the time that it was uh, released. But he was and making so, it. He was a, he he wasn't not a comedy director, and well. I feel like the the Escape from New York, um, it does take itself very seriously, and I feel like it works for the Escape from New York. Yes, and that's so. Like hearing you guys wax on about this movie and how it's like uh, like a comedy and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Like now, like recollecting like my memories from it, like it actually <laughs> it actually is really goddamn hilarious thinking about this <laughs> dystopian uh fraser park fraser park and there's like these gangs that <laughs> battle each other Just with put on the put on the chatting with a um, uh, uh, dance dance revolution mm -hmm. yeah and it's just it's 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 so ridiculous and it I I guess because like I'm a dimwit and it I just went over my head. No, I didn't realize I didn't realize there's no movie like this. I mean, there are movies like this, but it's not it's not like your normal movie. You know what I mean? It it, it really is not. Mm -hmm. And like I feel like for don't feel don't don't take yourself down a notch because I think I think a lot of people would. Here, here's the other thing too. I talked about this with Neo Ned, that movie about the Jeremy Renner being a, uh, a Nazi skinhead and falling in love with a black woman who thinks she's Adolf Hitler. <laughs> That's right. Yes, yeah. I remember that. When you when you when you see it on IMDb, the the score is very high. You see it on Letterboxd, the scores are very low because Letterboxd mm. has a social element, and it's like everybody sees your reviews and things. And, and I don't think it's cool to like a movie like Neo Ned <laughs> with stuff like that. It's not cool to watch a, a movie like this and go, oh, yeah, this movie's super fun. Yeah. Oh, they drop the N-word all the time. I Throughout think... Throughout the whole movie, you know, it's the soft with the soft R. So it's it's easy to be like, ooh, I, don't, I can't say this is a good movie. I but, think that this movie takes place in the current state of Fraser Park. I... I, I, I say the same thing. <laughs> I, I completely and everybody, agree. Everybody else is living in the future even though cuz when he robs that liquor store yeah it's just a dude. Beer, it's just a guy who works there also, and so there's this subculture of people who are just obsessed with BB revolution they've made it BBR they've they've made it into something that to die over the, yes. uh, the fb the, yeah the fb is uh, the, the, you live and die by the fb or something like that i think yeah. that's what they F say fp oh oh that's FB, the name of the, FB, name of the movie FB. I, I when they're when they're on the playground too and uh <laughs> you can see by the way that's disgusting she's like i'm looking for a pad 
Oh. She's looking for a tampon in the yeah. in the sand. He's like, "Oh, I got one. I pull it out of my pocket. Here you go." Know. You're like, <laughs> who does that? I know. Who, who who like is walking around but with the feminine hygiene in the background of products. that scene? You can see the highway, just normal mm-hmm. cars just driving by. Mm-hmm. It's like there's a world out there. I could I probably drove by this on my way That's to a car me show. Me driving to Disneyland, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, <they're, laughs> and for for one in the in the universe, you're like. What, what are these people doing? What are these people doing? You they, have know a, what? they have a flop house. Uh, they're training <laughs> yeah, by running up training. hills, you know, to play <laughs> beat, beat Revelation or whatever. But <laughs> in the actual real world, when the actual movie was being produced, just imagine making a stupid ass movie with your friends mm-hmm. and it blows up to some weird cult status. And I'm sure somewhere there's midnight showings of this type of movie. I would have been like, what the what the what the hell's going on? Like, oh, we were just doing this for fun. Yeah, what like, a, what a cool thing that would be. I mean, they did it. They, <laughs> yeah. I, they probably. I, I'm assuming you could probably make a documentary on this movie. Probably. Um, I thought one of the most hilarious <laughs> parts of this movie too was the guy with the neck brace that had all the signatures <laughs> on the yeah. ne- on his neck brace. <laughs> he had signature like sign my neck brace. Tyler's like falling out of his chair <laughs> no i'm not what are you talking about you keep sinking lower and lower i I'm sinking lower and lower uh, okay. you're about to you're you're okay, fine sorry there you go right. hey you. big boy mm. sitting up yeah. don't you don't you dare sit in up. your big batman pajamas you wear oh, okay <laughs> i'm gonna give you some warm milk before bed all right thank you very much <laughs> oh yeah we we are we are recording this and streaming this kind of late at night right now yeah it's yes. not late late but it's later than our normal schedule so yeah, it's a little it's sun, a, i mean down. it might be better for streaming because you know, noon on a Saturday, people are doing stuff. That's right. That's true. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joseph, what uh, what are some standout scenes that you could think of? Uh, well, the boots. Uh, I, I I mean, it's cool <laughs> to know the trivia behind the reasoning of the boots. Mm-hmm. But as soon as I saw these things, uh, I like snow boots. Or something. I know. Yeah. I was immediately look like Uggs. I was immediately thinking of these things. I like couldn't help. But like the oh the, the Astro boots the, or whatever the Among Us boots what are they the, they just call them big red boots right yeah these big red oh th- yes 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 big red shoes yeah. <laughs> that's immediately what I thought of they when become, I saw it. they become uh, in <laughs> vogue recently I know they're like a they're like um uh was Supreme yeah oh yeah 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 <laughs> like yeah. sort of like the faux high end yeah. uh fashion yeah they're in vogue right now but um but yeah that's uh the the him living in a tent or like yeah. the rules for living in his in that guy's house. You can stay there, but you have to live in a tent. And you and you can't uh but he, he like said some rules. Like you can't drink or you can't something you can't do it without the the guy who lives there who ends up being his trainer, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um and um This is so ridiculous. But just the fact that like this town is just filled with these people and they're like <laughs> like it's like a gang rivalry, right? Mm-hmm. But they're just kind of living in the town, kind of doing their thing. Like yeah. when they're not battling each other, you know, yeah. they're, they're not confronting when each they're other. They're just working their. They're just like, but doing li- their day to day, whatever. Yeah. And like, and like she lives like down the street. She's next. She lives right next door to the training getting training sh- house. Yeah. Yeah. Getting <laughs> struck by her father. And- yeah, I'm curious as to like because where he lives, uh, Stacy's dad. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. And. He, they either just found that location, which is like a junkyard with a trailer, or they they built that. Yeah, it could just be a, someone's house they rented out. Yeah. I mean, like that, I've that, driven through many mountain towns in California, and there's a lot of houses that are just piled high with junk. That's mm-hmm. that's true. I've I've delivered to such houses. Was there a re- <laughs> was there a reason that Beatro dies? Is, is, like. No, he he he, just, he danced too hard. He, he danced <laughs> yeah, he too hard. Just, he just, that from my recollection of watching this film and uh, when he dies, like at first, like I was trying to think, like, oh, was he poisoned? Like I was trying to like find clues. Nothing. Like no, he just he just collapsed and died, and that and and I appreciated that because <laughs> he got one eighty seven. You don't need a reason. That I <laughs> I appreciated that because. That can happen to any one of us. Like right. we could, we I could, could. I could dance too hard. Sorry. Okay. We could, we we could be walking up a, a, a stack of stairs, and then all of a sudden, just done. Mm-hmm. And you're done. 
So like I and and I I said this before and I'll say it again. Yeah. I really appreciate the realistic uh death scenes. Uh in This is in a realistic movies. death scene. The movie uh the, it, it was it it didn't feel like Okay. No, you just said it, it felt like a two-hour piece of shit. Is what you said at the beginning. It did. It did feel very long. Like I, I <laughs> did. I was. Waiting. But now I know that you guys like it. I. Like I was it. waiting Dude, for it to end. Fuck? No, that's not what I'm saying. But well, kind of what I'm saying <laughs> is that because <laughs> having having your guys's opinions, uh, you know, out in the air in like processing it and like remembering, uh, like what I saw. Y- you guys are right. Yeah, this is a comedy. <laughs> like, this, and this is we are. I mean, it is a comedy. I didn't take it that way though. That's oh, really? The, that, that's the thing though. It's like I was taking it. This movie. You said like, you laughed at some of the parts of the. Well, of course I laughed at the at some of the parts, but like I but was. Didn't, but it wasn't a comedy. I didn't realize how ironic it was. Fuck and you talking about. Oh, okay. What, what do you mean? What the? If I'm talking about, I just told you. No racial bigotry here. Well, well, actually, I, guess, I guess we're just confused because you watched it thinking it was a genuine attempt at like a serious movie about these people. Yes. Oh, okay. And then after I, after after hearing your guys's um, you know like uh, opinions about it, I'm it, like it's kind of like coming to me. I'm just like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Well, that's right. That okay, okay. Right, now, gonna... now it so now it's making more sense to me, and now like I'm appreciating it okay, more okay, for what okay, it is. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense, sure, sure, sure. What the fuck? What do you want from me? <laughs> what do you want from me? I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. What do you want from me? <laughs> sure. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Sure, Jan. Okay. So <laughs> I have to comment on the idea of. Attempting to make something this stupid and like self-referential and like mm-hmm. poking fun at itself versus not. It's like the idea of like Sharknado is doing it on purpose. Miami Connection is not. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, Samurai Cop is not. Velocipaster is doing it on purpose. Samurai Cop is not doing it on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> this is on purpose, but for whatever reason, it's almost like it's not trying to make a bad movie. It's trying to make a ridiculous movie. That's how, at yes. least that's how I could, I took it. Yeah, where something like Velocipaster is trying to do more bad, less ridiculous. Like when they and it's trying to be bad on. It's almost they, like they think they can get away with a lot of stuff because like oh, it's a bad movie anyway. Like we're making a bad yeah. movie, yeah. yeah so we right. can just do whatever we want. It's true. It's it's like a low effort bad movie where yeah. this is a high effort bad movie that wasn't trying to be a bad movie. It was trying to be <laughs> o- over the top and ridiculous and like. Um, you guys remember that that YouTube channel called Epic Mealtime? Oh yeah, I think it's still around. But yes, I do. Okay, it was like their version of like a burrito would be like wrapped in bacon strips and deep fried and then stuffed with Taco meat sauce. Town, like this SNL skit. Taco yeah, Town. Yeah, it's like oh, it's yeah. so extravagant just, that you look. So, you take one look at the meal when it's done, and it's like, who the fuck made this? Who's eating this? And then you. It, I would hope that it would taste good when you eat it. Yeah. When you watch the FP, you're like, what? <laughs> Where did this? Who who thought of this? Who decided to do this? And and who, who funded this? <laughs> there was no funding. Yeah. So. I like that. Yeah, exactly. A little bit, a little bit of Taco Town. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, we put a pizza in there. We've um, we've talked about the FP long enough. I, I think that people are going to form their own opinions at this point on whether or not it's worth even exploring for their time. Um, let's give our final thoughts and our grades, uh, about this. And you can summarize all that in, uh, in your thoughts, Tyler, what do you got? Okay. So, I, I, so after, and I want your honest answer uh, after, um, this should put our grades in the beginning again. We got I'm telling you, I'm we, telling you, we gotta do that. Oh, well, we'll, uh, take that. What would you have graded the, it before? Oh, oh, okay. Um, yeah, I would have graded it a, a D. Okay, uh, okay. There we go. In the beginning, mm-hmm. um, after this discussion and everything that has transpired, uh, I give it a solid B plus. Like it just. I feel like it, I'm a cult leader. Like me and you are cult leaders. Like with Tyler's are. That's a, <laughs> our not, flock. It's not a cult leader. I, it hurts my feelings when you when you change your your grade so far. How does it hurt your feelings? Because I want because <laughs> I want to hear you. I want to hear your opinion, not our opinions parroted back I'm to not, us. I, I, this is my opinion. I'm telling you that you go from a D to a B plus when you haven't even watched the movie again. 
I, 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 these words that you, that you, that you <laughs> tell yes, me. they're all, they're all like, very, there's t- I, two, you know, two syllables or less. I, <laughs> okay, so I, I'm going to go through this very quickly okay. because I know we're on time. When I talk to you guys about movies. Yes. I ha- I've have formed my own opinion before I come into the beta studios, right? Okay, yes, right? yes. Okay, right. yeah. And so then I present them to you, and then <laughs> we all discuss it. We debate it, okay. like a, like we we we're, we're, we're discussing, uh-huh. and then I form new ideas. I realize things. Okay. I realize things that I might have missed, and uh, mm-hmm. and you know mm-hmm. everything about that. And so. Okay. When it comes to this discussion, okay, yeah. When it comes to this discussion specifically, okay, <laughs> your opinions on this movie made me realize, oh, this went over my head. Uh huh. Now I'm realizing what I have missed, and actually, this is kind of a fun movie, and okay. I didn't realize it in the beginning. Did I have a fun time watching this movie? Of course I did. Of course I did. But I went into this movie. I just don't want. I just Why don't do want the, it, the. Joseph, don't look at Peter like that. Huh? No, I was looking at the board. I just don't want uh, side eyeing. I just. Don't I was want... waiting. I was. I was like, like hit the ding. Like, oh hit, yeah. Hit the ding on this. Oh yeah. Here we go. Boom. And uh, 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 uncommon uh, W take from Tyler. Yes. It's uncommon. <laughs> I just don't want people to think that like I'm holding a gun under the table <laughs> at you and like great. Say I'll beat this say to your nuts. No, <laughs> no, no, that's rate, not rate, it. Rate this movie good. It's like okay, okay. Um, here's a here's a good uh here's a good uh, metaphor. Uh, you know, like our our Congress, like uh, they debate things. You know, like uh, and so sure. It takes them weeks sometimes. So yeah, it takes weeks. But and you, for us, but you it takes you, a couple of hours. But you, thirty minutes. You said, <laughs> you said that you hated the movie and it was felt like a two-hour movie and it was terrible. And then me and, and Joseph the, said it was we liked it. And immediately you're like, you know what? I think I like this because of <laughs> the the points that you <laughs> because made. Because of like three minutes of conversation, one one-sided conversation. Maybe I'm just easily swayed. Sure. No. He's still in his his sponge state. He's still absorbing the movie <laughs> and other opinions about the movie, and you know he, he it's like he's like a glass. You know he gets filled with his version, his opinion, and then we come in and we fill his glass with our opinions. Yeah, and then our, our, our opinions mixture, are heavier. Our mixture sometimes it's like water and oil. Sometimes it's like it a Kool Aid and and a red. Or Kool-Aid. how about yeah yeah yeah? It or how about Tyler's this? opinion out of the glass? How about this? You just guys uh, bring out a uh, great. Opinions about movies and oh, that makes me oh, thank that you. makes me realize thank you, uh, fella. that what anything that went over my head because I'm a I'm, but listen, I'm, a, I'm a dimwit. But so. listen, you're not a dimwit for one. Uh number two, uh when you brought Hellraiser to the show, me and Joseph shat all over it for <laughs> An hour straight. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! Yeah, and my was, opinion and Halloween. Yeah, and Halloween. Yeah, my yeah pi- that was that was uh, my opinion has not changed war. on Halloween. By the way, <laughs> that was a war zone. Hellraiser went up, but I'm still like, eh, it's a three star movie for Halloween. Oh, uh, that was a war zone. Yeah, because I mean, either either it's you 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 don't have enough ammunition to sway my opinion one way or the other. <laughs> <laughs> or I just am happy to keep my shitty opinion. <laughs> Halloween movie. I, li- I like, yeah, I like having a shitty opinion about stuff. It's fun. It makes the show fun. Anyways, uh, B plus for this okay. movie. Um, B plus. I, I definitely want to. B tra- plus for B tro. I, I, you know what? I got to watch it again because like now, like after like discussing it with you guys and like hearing the opinion of uh, the Ryan, I, uh, Ryan mm-hmm. um, I gotta watch it again because I think like watching it again is gonna give me like a new like a new lease on life, like a new light on the movie because like <laughs> I went into this movie thinking something completely different, mm-hmm. um, but like after discussing it with you guys and hearing the opinions of Ryan, like it actually like thinking about it now, it just it's goddamn hilarious. <laughs> okay, cool. So Fun B movie. B plus you said yeah. Yeah. Uh, Joseph, what's your grade for the FP? The FP. Um, uh, hmm. Yeah, it's like B plus, bordering A minus. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah, it's like pretty, it's like in that range for sure. Like it was definitely like, um, like going into it or like starting the movie and then like getting through like the first 30 minutes, I wasn't sure. Mm-hmm. But then having that sort of, the way I watched it on accident on this hybrid viewing of like I got like a one and a half viewings basically, mm-hmm. um, it's uh it benefited it like it going back to it with the mind of like the kind of movie that it is and what you're in for, 
definitely uh, helps helps uh, digest the movie or like intake the movie a lot. You know, yeah, a lot uh, better. Um, yeah, it is very funny. It's a very funny movie because of how ridiculous these characters are <laughs> and the contrast <laughs> to this the Jatro, his character is so mm-hmm. like is so like down here. Everybody's like operating at eleven. Where he's where he's like sitting yes. at like a, sitting at like a three or four in terms yeah. of like ch- charisma and stuff yeah personality, sure. um, but um but yeah it's uh it's fun it's it's a fun movie and it's I mean you if you haven't watched it and I mean and you're okay with the type of language they use then uh it's streaming yeah. for free on Tubi and Pluto and Freebie yes. and <laughs> a bunch of other stuff, um, but yeah it's uh it's good B plus. B plus. High, okay. B, high B plus. Okay. Um, before I give my grade on this, there's some chat in the chat. Oh, yes. Uh, Your phone is right there. Joel says uh, Joel says he's with uh, Tyler on this one. Having an open mind is a good thing. That's right. So there That's you go. right. Someone yeah. on Team Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know anything about film. So. <laughs> well, that much is true. Um, it's... Listeners, you know, <laughs> we get we might get a lot of shit for giving Tyler a lot of shit. Um, we're all pals here. It's, oh yeah, it's our it's our way. <laughs> yeah, and uh, it's just mirth. Yeah, it's all mirth, and it is it is fun when we have a, uh, <laughs> a complete one eighty of the course of like a ten minute conversation. I'm like, mm-hmm. where did that come from? I feel bad, you know, but I don't feel bad. Um, anyways, uh, before I go any further too, I wanted to drop a, a thank you for Joseph Bridges status for the entire chat here. Behold me, a reincarnation of the Buddha of the Golden Green. That's right. <laughs> there he is. Thank you, buddy. And also, uh, jo- Joel was with us for most of the time too. Hell yeah. So thanks guys. Uh, <laughs> great. Um, thank you, Joel. Very good. Um, so my, my take on this is, like I said, it, it grew, it grew since the first time. I probably would have put it around a... I don't know, like a B, maybe B minus the first time. I think I'm going to give like an A minus on this. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, an A minus. Uh, That's right, Joe. You're on the board. Joe's on the board. Joe's on the board. (laughs) Um, Along with Joel. Both of them are. (laughs) Yes, they both you guys. Um, So I I really think that this is a movie that people should watch. Yes. And whether or not you're going to like it or not, that's that's up to debate, you know? Mm -hmm. Just like uh, Wayne Campbell said in Wayne's World, you know, the uh, Led Zeppelin didn't make move, uh, songs that everybody loved. They left that up for the Bee Gees. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is not a movie for everybody. Yeah. But I feel like everybody should give it a shot. Um, you know, try to put yourself in a 2011 mindset and realize that you're not supposed to like these characters. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, it blows my mind sometimes when people are like, you know, I'm going to go back to Neo Ned. They're like, the Nazi is the protagonist. It's like, okay, well, how did he get to be a Nazi? You're not born as a Nazi. Let's see what happened to lead up to that point. And maybe there's a different story. And, you yeah. know, maybe maybe you can learn about these people along the way. And, like, just having this knee jerk reaction. Mm-hmm. And this is all leading up to say, uh, be careful, there's some N words in this. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Variations that, of the N word, yeah, too. Very, multiple. Yeah. You'll never knew that you could hear so many versions. Oh, jeez. Um, but again, you're just not supposed to like these characters. When you have a bad guy in a movie and and they kick a dog, and all of a sudden you're like, okay, that's too far. <laughs> yeah, I murdered ten people, but he kicked the dog, and that's too far. You know, in this case, yeah. they're they're not necessarily bad guys, but they're not they're not heroes. So these yeah. are all made Anti-heroes. to be. They're all made to be made fun of, even the good guys. So mm-hmm. uh, watch it on Tubi, watch it on Freebie, and um, if you dare, watch the sequels. Have a good time. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, that's all I got. You got anything? No. Okay. Uh, no, I think what that's is, it. What is it time for? Now it's time for the Wheel of Destiny. One wheel. Ooh, it's Joseph. Eight slots. Three hosts. This is the Wheel of Destiny. That's right. The FP is off the wheel. Um, now we have... A couple, <laughs> I gotta replace it with something. And uh, the FP two. I really do thought. Not, I really thought not. about it. I really thought about why it. Why don't you want to? Why don't you want to put it on there? I thought you liked this movie. I, I did. <laughs> you did but, like it. You've had enough. 
But yeah, you know, <laughs> less is more. So um, I'm going to take a little bit of break from that. And we have our faithful listener, unofficial Patreon member who never gets mentioned, old Bruce Berkey, <gasps> um, who has uh, asked me if we have like an unofficial relationship with the, with the um, Patreon. And I won't get into that. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> he asked me if, if we were going to be reviewing uh, Paprika on the wheel you know, because he's in the, pa- the in yeah. the Patreon pool, yeah. and I was like, you know what? It's on the fan pick list, right? Yeah, it is. I'm gonna put it on the wheel. We're going. We're upgrading it from fan pick list to uh, my official pick list. This oh, okay. is Paprika. Mm-hmm. Paprika anime. It's where Christopher Nolan got all his ideas for Inception. Who's the new guy on the pod? Which one? Which one? Kev Man is here in, in the chat. Who's the new guy on the pod? I don't know. Tyler, is that when you maybe he has? Is it Tyler you, he referring to? Maybe he hasn't seen you since you uh, shaved your hair, something like that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I took the shears to my head. So okay, so paprika is now on the wheel, and I'm going to recap the wheel here. We have paprika from Pete. You call, can see the wheel. Call me by your name from Pete. Uh, arachnophobia from Tyler. Mm. American history X from Tyler. A lot of n words in that one too. Uh, The Pianist from Joseph Stalker from Joseph An Unfinished Life from Mitch And Deep Murder from Stu on the Patreon Deep Murder So here we go Uh, I'm really hoping it's going to be what we watch next week It's going to be American History X I've been wanting to watch that More N-words It's Call Me By Your Name (laughs) Finally I think that's the oldest one I think so Yeah it is It is Call Me By Your Name Brianna's been constantly uh, Harassing me over When's the the movie Going to be picked Because she She asked me to watch this With her Uh huh And I said If it's that good If you say it's that good She very very rarely Will watch a movie And then say We should watch it together again Mm. So she's like If it's that good I gotta put it on the wheel And it's been so long And she's like I wanna watch it with you We should have her on the show Yeah maybe We should do a commentary Yeah We'll have her on the commentary (laughs) Oh that would be great No let's not do that No (laughs) What? Not for this movie What? Why? 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 I don't wanna wanna do a commentary For Call Me By Your Name Why? I don't know Just don't I don't wanna watch Chalamet lick a peach Or I don't know With both of you Hold on (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Wait a minute. Call me by your name. That's uh, with uh, that's don't, the, with don't, our don't, army don't, hammer. Don't worry. Yes. Don't worry. I will tell you right. Is now. that is it directed by Luca Guadagnino, tar- starring Timothy Chalamet, Army Hammer, oh, I Michael saw Stolberg, Amira Kassar, Esther Gerrell. These are mm-hmm. people who I don't know. Okay. Yeah. No. You're right. That's probably not a good commentary. Though. <laughs> and, and here's the here's the synopsis. <laughs> I on forgot Just, about that. I've seen this movie. Here's before. the synopsis on Just Watch in 1980s in the 1980s Italy. Romance blossoms between a 17-year-old student and an older man hired as his father's research assistant. It's so, it's so ridiculous. So we shall see. I think that's streaming on Hulu right now, isn't it? Uh, and it, it's streaming somewhere. Let's see. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I think I... Uh, I thought it was on HBO. It's on Netflix. Netflix. Oh, okay. I stream picked I stream picked this movie. I think you did, yeah. You did, yes. Okay, anything else, fellas? I think that's it. No. Okay. No. Once again, <laughs> thank you to everyone in the chat. Thank you to Joel. Thank you to Joe Bridge and Kev Man, who just popped in at the end. What's up, buddy? Um, oh, my gosh. Really Joe Bridges. <laughs> what did he say? Chalamet shot bones and all 15 minutes away from his house, and he, Joe Bridges, knows a girl that tried to stalk him. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Good trivia. Good we'll, for her. We'll have to uh, mention that on the next show. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, again, we will be streaming again next week, probably at noon next time, but I don't know. Maybe we'll do it later in the evening. We'll make it make it an evening thing from here on out. Who knows? Hmm. We'll discuss off air, and you'll hear us when we go live, and we'll post on the Facebook page. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Anyways, yes. <laughs> thank you to our cool ass yard duties over on Patreon. That's Javier, Listener Steven, Heather Sachs, Ryan Corbin, and Chris. We also have a whole litany of other Patreon members that are not cool ass yard duties that are class clown, teachers, assistants, and new kids. Uh, we appreciate all of our Patreon members and uh, head to the patreon.com slash middle class film class if you'd like to support. Um, and we haven't figured out the whole Twitch subscri- subscription thing yet, so one day that'll happen. What are all these people coming at the end of the show? Hey. You got Tyler's mom in the show. Hey, Wait, we got Jamie. Oh, hey. Caveman, caveman the matriarch, lesbies in the show. The matriarch of the minor family finally showed up. That's yeah. right. Uh, hold on a second. Hell you were yeah. watching the whole time, Jamie? <laughs> <laughs> you said nothing. I love it. Um, so anyways, so thank you to all of those cool SCR duties. Until next time. 
Thank you for following us this week as we gab and chatter and we talk about the FP. Follow us next week as we watch Call Me By Your Name. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash middle class film class and send us an email, mcfcpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, and follow us on Instagram at middle class film class and leave us a voicemail, why don't you, at 209-730-6010. And follow us on Twitter at podcast mcfc and on TikTok at middle class film class and subscribe to our Twitch. Watch us on Twitch. Yeah, that's right. Do it up. Everything's in the show notes. We'll see you next time. See ya. See you next time. <laughs>